This is uh, Brian DM82, and I'm doing my first video on connecting the Anirin Booster Pack to the Kronos Watch. This right here is the TI Launch Pad connected to the Anirin Booster Pack. This little jumper right here is included with the Booster Pack that allows it to connect to connect the 2553 chip to the computer. It uh, swaps swaps out its TX and RX UART pins. Um, right now it's flashing red indicating that it's looking for a Kronos signal. So you gotta take your Kronos watch, set it to accelerometer or PowerPoint mode and then click the down button. Then it'll start flashing green indicating that it's communicating with it. Hit the down button again to cut it off. Um, the launch pad will start flashing red again indicating that it's looking for a signal again. The watch itself, the ACC mode only lasts for an hour. After that it cuts itself off uh, to try to conserve power. Included with the watch is the USB dongle. This can use uh, sync and wire, uh, wireless updater modes but you could program that into the module if you really wanted to. The module is kind of better because with it you can get the watch address and the sync. Uh, the signal status and with the watch address you can program it to actually listen to multiple watches at once and if you were to use the frequency jumping of it you could probably probably set it to uh, listen to watches of different versions such as the 915 and the 434 um, I'm gonna try to uh, release the code um, put in the source code for you and walk you through it a little bit. It's going to be a little bit quick. I kind of need to I need to use the 2553 chips for something else and I don't have any extra ones. So that's why I'm making this video. Um, but I'll run through the code real quick for you. Maybe at a later date I'll make another video going through showing more more of what you could do with it. Here's the code for the booster pack that I use. Um, I'm going to try to get through it really quick. The first line is the include file, standard include file for the 2553. Um, next is that array, which is basically used to send and receive that instructions to the radio. The join and link arrays are going to be modified by the join and link request that it receives from the Kronos and then just sent back out. The RX array is what stores the uh, Kronos data. Um, the custom config array right here stores the configuration registers. First thing it does is sets the clock to 8 megahertz, sets up um, the timer, and sets its interrupt. Clears out all the ports. Um, the resistors for the unused pins should be uh, pulled down, but I didn't do it. Um, let's see, right here, the UART sets up the UART for a baud rate of 9600. Sets the interrupt enable to receive. Right here sets up the SPI. Um, you're just going to write those original registers, the uh, or initial registers, um, the power. Um, enable and calibrate the frequency synthesizer. Set up the GDO pin array, uh, I mean input. Set up the red LED. Right here you're just going to set the radio state to either transmit or receive if radio set is equal to 1. Um, if data uh, TX is equal to 1 then that means you're going to send out the RX array which is basically the Kronos data. Um, right here's a little loop. This is delay for your uh, the UR. It's necessary because if you don't put that in it's it, it'll send out multiple bytes of the same thing. Um, right here I set one of the bits so that you can on, on on reading it consecutively you could tell that it's been read before and then it clears that data TX to let you know that has been sent um, right here it'll go to sleep and set all interrupts right here if it wakes up if it's been sleeping it'll wake up set it to idle calibrate the, the synthesizer or whatever um, go back into idle um, reset the um, the GDO pin edge select from low to high. Um, set the radio to receive so that when it gets back up here, it's going to try to receive data from the Kronos. Um, then it's just going to go back to sleep again. 
and this um, basically this happens every five minutes uh, every five seconds it'll run this little aisle routine as soon as it gets done with that um, this right here is the port 2 interrupt vector um, first thing it does is it checks to see the state of the uh, edge select because it really wants it to wait it'll go from low to high this will get called then this will change it from hot to high to low and then it wants to wait for it to go back down to high to low because during the initial one the low to high state that means that it just re started receiving data and you want it to go back down to high to low because you want it to uh, wait for it to get finished receiving that data that way you can check the buffer to see what it's got alright um if the radio is transmitting it's just gonna clear the the variable telling it yeah uh, data has been transmitted if not if it's receiving then we're gonna read the first byte in the FIFO to get the length uh, make sure that the length's between 15 and 20 so that you can make sure that it's the Kronos accelerometer or PowerPoint data and then you're gonna get the rest of it including the signal status and the CRC OK byte and you're gonna make sure that the CRC is good if the ports three that means that the end device the Kronos wants to join you're gonna check the join token you're gonna modify the join array with the data array that you just got in the first uh, or the bytes five through eight is the source address eleven is a random transaction ID all I do is flip the bits and then send it right back out to it it just cares if it's random um, and not consecutive or the same thing because it'll it'll um, ignore it if it's the same transaction ID now this uh, this right here is the current transaction ID that one needs to be set so it knows that you're responding to it um, flush the transmit FIFO buffer copy that modified join array to the buffer and send it out um, right here if the ports 2 that means the ED wants the link you know check the link token basically do the same thing as the join token um, else if the data array 9 equals OX20 that right there is checking the port if the length is OF which means that if the length is 15 bytes that means that the ED is sending data so you want to set up your RX, RX array with the data that you just got which is going to be in data array you want to set that up as the first four bytes are going to be the address 0 through 3 byte 4 is going to be the buttons um, the first nibble is going to be 1, 2, or 3 um, specifying the the actual button that's been pressed if a button has been pressed the second nibble is going to be the mode ace, uh, accelerometer or powerpoint mode um, and what I do is I modify the very first bit the most significant bit um, I set it after it's been read the first time that way the second time you read it you know if you've read it before if not it's gonna be clear that means you know it's brand new data um, 5 through 7 is the X Y and Z of the accelerometer data if PowerPoint mode all of them are zeros byte 8 is the signal strength I zero it with 80 to get a value from 0 to about I think D0 there is a formula you can do to get it from the negative to the positive decibel range or whatever but I just care about it's easier for me just to do it 0 to whatever um, then you copy the bytes from the data array that you want into the RX array um, if the received data is garbage flush the, the received FIFO um, if it's in that transmit state mark it as 0 um, now you want to wake it up after you get done with this um, and wait for a low to high transition so you want to reset that so it's low to high that way once that GDO pin bin, uh, bit gets set again this will be called um, right here is the UR transmit byte function first thing it does is it clears the the UR receive interrupt enable pin because you don't want for some reason transmitting a byte um, sets off the receive interrupt vector it goes to the receive interrupt vector I don't know why but anyway I just clear that and then upon transmitting the byte I set it back set it back up and enable the interrupt again right here is the SPI transmit and receive function um, for the 2553 the receive and transmit are basically the same thing if you want to receive data you have to send out dummy bytes and if you want to send out data you gotta you know send out your real bytes and you could just discard whatever is received um, right here's radio right 
It just writes the radio, radio read, reads from the radio. Right here's the timer. Timer interrupts routine. Um, this happens about every five seconds. Uh, sets the idle, wakes it up, toggles the LED red, um, clears the timer. Uh, timer interrupts request flag. And basically that sets it back into receive mode for a second um, so that it could try to get data from the Kronos. And if not, it just goes back to sleep. Um, right here's the UART receive interrupt. Um, now basically all it does is check for a value of 255, uh, yeah, 255 FF. Um, that means that processing Arduino launchpad, whatever, that's communicating with the booster pack, um, it means that it wants to receive data. It's just a request for data. So it sends the, it sets the data TX variable, um, then wakes up on exit, which will send out the data that it wants. This right here, radio read status, it basically reads the status multiple times, waiting for it to be the same, same thing twice. Um, the reason for that is that in between states, it'll kind of be flip flopping around and you really want it to get it when it av after it's stable stabilized um, then it'll return that status if not it'll return FF which means um, bad it's bad it's not a real uh, status <laughs>